Hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Bible Church. So glad to see you guys here midweek. I uh, hope that everyone's had a good week so far. And if you have not, this is a place of rest. This is a place to bring your needs to God. We're going to, if you could stand, we're actually going to open into a time of praise and worship because he is so worthy. No matter what has been going on in your week, he knows it and he's worthy of your praise. Jesus, oh God, we come before you. Lord God, acknowledging that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. You deserve all of our praise. Oh God, and we lift up your name. We give you the glory and the honor. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord God, for the blessings that you're bringing in my life right now. God, the things that I can't see, Lord, we, Jesus, we trust in you. We believe in you, Lord God, and we're asking that you would intervene. Oh God, we already feel your presence today in this place. Oh God, and we believe and trust that you have planned for tonight. God, have your way, Lord God, and let it be accomplished in this place today, Jesus. Let's sing that chorus together hallelujah you're worthy to be praised you're worthy to be praised huh. to be praised sing hallelujah you're worthy to be praised
Jesus, because you are worthy. Let's magnify the name of the Lord in this house tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is here in this house and He's trying to speak to us a very important and special message. And that's that God wants to meet your needs if you'll express to Him and say, Jesus, you are all that I need. Everything that I have need of, I can find in the presence of God, for in His presence is fullness of joy, and at His right hand is pleasures forevermore. So if you have a need tonight, why don't you lift your hands in faith and believe that God is able to meet your need here in this house. Let's 
beseech the throne of God right now for these needs, for whatever you have need of tonight. Lord, we honor your holy name. We praise you, God, for you are majestic in, in wonder. Lord, your throne is high above all the earth, and you're exalted high above all other gods. And we know that you're able and willing to meet our needs when we cry out to you. So, God, humbly we raise our hands and we raise our hearts unto you and pray that you would meet us where we are in our time of weakness and despair and sickness or whatever the case may be. God, you are able. You're able to meet our needs, Jesus. So we ask you to rest your hand upon every need in this house for all those that are watching on the live stream that may be struggling with something in their life. God, we believe that you're able to intercede for them in the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Can we clap our hands to the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. The Lord is good. And his mercy endureth to all generations. I have a couple announcements for you. Ladies, don't forget that Ladies Conference is this weekend. And gentlemen, don't forget that this Saturday is men's prayer here at the church. So please be conscious of that throughout the weekend. And now is our time to continue worshiping and our giving. And as we know, Wednesday night offering goes to missions. So as you give tonight, give as unto the Lord. And remember, there's many ways that you can give. You can give online, the app, through the mail, or the giving boxes in the back. And while you give, feel free to reach across the aisle and say hi to someone you haven't seen for a while. And let's have a, a couple moments of fellowship, greeting one another in the name of the Lord. Amen.
so good. What a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Wonderful to be with you tonight on this midweek service. What a wonderful time this past weekend we had. Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord. Just, just a delight to be in the presence of the Lord and to, to celebrate and to enjoy one another and then of course you know several guests came to be with us and I'm really thankful and grateful that we had the opportunity to have those type of services and very much excited about the future and all that the Lord is going to do. Amen. 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 And uh, what a what an enjoyable time it was. Really truly uh, a good good enriching experience and that's of course my prayer that that you felt the same that it was meaningful and beneficial as well amen it i think you know as i reflect on it you know even now standing here um i think it it helps us just to truly embrace a, a new season um and and that's a positive thing that's a positive thing sometimes we you know we can say the right words, but, but embracing, you know, whatever it might be can elude us at times. And so having a, a you know, formal type situation. Thank you to everyone who helped in so many ways. I, I'm afraid to mention any one individual for fear of uh, not mentioning uh, someone who should be spoken of, but so many served in so many different ways, uh, whether it was serving food or helping with uh, worship or, or in many other ways, you know, parking lot. So many were deeply involved and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Um, it's a blessing to me personally, and I appreciate it. But really, it's a greater blessing for you. Uh, when you get involved, there's, there's nothing like being involved that really helps an individual and brings them strength. And whatever it is that you're able to do, uh, involvement doesn't look the same for everyone else. Right. Or it looks different, rather. I mean, for each individual. The key is to get in the harvest. The key is to get involved in some way. Um, helping in, in whatever way you can, whatever talent you have, whatever ability you have, giving it to the Lord and, and saying, God, I want to help. I want to be involved. So I wanted to just say a special thank you. We have a lot of exciting things on the calendar. You will not want to miss next Wednesday. Uh, we're going to have a missionary with us in service, uh, missionary Sante Jimenez, and he is a dynamic speaker and um, a man of God who, uh, I don't want to tell his story, but you will want to be here in that service. Uh, that is next Wednesday. He had no Sundays available, and so I said, well, we'll snag him on a Wednesday then. So that'll be next Wednesday. You'll, I believe that you will uh, be blessed by that and enjoy that service quite a bit. And then the following Wednesday, May 1st, uh, I'm going to take some time and we're just going to do some updates and we're going to kind of have a family meeting and talk about everything that uh, we've all been doing and, and look ahead a little bit to some exciting things that are coming next or Wednesday do a live stream. So if, if do everything you can to be here and, and that's, you know, it's, it's a family meeting. So, um, so we're going to do that on Wednesday, May 1st. And I'm looking forward to that. I know it's going to be a, a great time in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we started this brief uh, series on what the Bible teaches about church services. Uh, and we made some progress and we spoke about it and talked about it. And I don't have any one text that I'm going to refer to tonight, so we'll, um, we'll just make our way forward here. Uh, I'm going to refer to a lot of different texts of Scripture to guide us and, and help shape this. And so um, we want to do a part two. So we, we spoke about church services and we, we spoke about uh, Christian worship and it, 
descending from a synagogue gathering and, and how all of that looked and, and every you know, part of that and the different components. Uh, is this uh, jogging anyone's memory? Yes. Maybe? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I'm not going to reteach part one. But I do think that those common elements of, of teaching and preaching, of singing, of a response from the congregation and an exaltation of scripture are important to just briefly mention again. And if you'll recall, we, we spoke about something in church services that's very near and dear to my heart. And that is structure. What a wonderful thing. Just... Rolls off the tongue so gloriously. Structure. Oh, praise God for structure. It's glorious, really. It's a wonderful thing. Um, and there is biblical precedent for church services to have structure. We spoke about that in 1 Corinthians 14. Uh, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager, bid speaking in tongues, but ever about movies. Yeah, Toy Stories, I don't know, Veggie Tales, maybe, something like that. You don't notice the structure as much. You know what I mean? Because it's done well. And, and when it's done well, the structure isn't the thing that stands out. <laughs> when it's done poorly, the structure does stand out. And we, we, when it's done poorly, we all know, okay, here's what's next. And we know what's coming next, and we know we just get into a, a, a I don't know, a rut. Thank you. Yeah, we, we just get into a bit of a rut if we don't do structure well. But if we do structure well, then it is pleasing to the Lord, and it is helpful to us to be effective as we move forward in the flow of the Holy Ghost. Uh, one of the fascinating things about following God of course, God is very structured. Uh, I mean, have you ever considered the universe or the cell? God is a God of structure and order. Right. But, but God does it well. And, and so it, if done well, it's a blessing, and we can do the same by the grace of God. And it's is we understand that God is structured, that right. God is focused and structured, but we also understand that we are finite. Right. And we do not always know everything that God is doing. In a given service, one could be healed of a deadly disease. Another could be repenting of a, of a terrible sin. Um, another could be filled with the Holy Ghost for the first time. We don't know all of the different things that can happen in one service. Right. But God does. And so that's where the flow of the Spirit matters, and that's where we have to trust in the Lord and say, okay, God, I don't know everything that needs to happen in this service, but I know that there's definitely some things that need to happen. I know there's definitely some needs. There's definitely some concerns. And so I'm going to trust in you, and I'm going to trust in who you are as God, that you will guide us, and that we, by your Spirit, can get into the flow of the Spirit. Right. Uh, one thing that, uh, that uh, Pastor Shaw said uh, as we visited that, that was really significant to me, and it's something I've heard him share before, but uh, I think it bears repeating, is that, well, he didn't necessarily say this, but he alluded to it at one point. Maybe he did say it. I don't remember. Anyway, um, in a Pentecostal church, it's not the platform. Stage is the new word. Anyway, whatever. I don't care what you call it. Stage, platform, whatever. This thing that's elevated. Um, it's not the platform and the pulpit that, that drives the service. I think he did say that. It's the people of God. And... When churches get into a circumstance where the platform and the pulpit are, are causing things to happen in a service, we're in a bad place. Right. Right. Um, that's not the way that it needs to be. It needs to be that as the people of God, all of us are engaged. Right. Right. All of us are focused on praising God, on magnifying God, particularly during the worship service. It's not the worship service 
isn't really about our needs. Uh, the worship service is about God. Um, and, and it's about praising and magnifying God. And if you have a burden or such a great uh, problem or illness in your life that it's hard to push past that into praise of God, that's where you can turn that burden or that illness into a praise. Maybe you come to a worship service and you have a terrible headache or a life-threatening illness. Then you turn that into a praise. God, I praise you as my healer. Because you're shifting your focus away from the need, away from the situation, and onto God who is able to help in the situation. Praise God. But it has to start in the pew. Uh, Frank Bartleman was part of that early Pentecostal revival in the early 1900s, and he wrote different, um, you know, uh, I don't know, circulars or periodicals or, or, or whatever. The written word was very popular back then around those early revivals. And Bartleman said this about the early Pentecostal revival. He said, a revival almost always begins among what he called the laity. And what he meant was the people of God. What he meant was that it's not pulpit driven. It's not platform driven. It's all of us as the people of God that say, I want to have a move of God. That I am here to praise the Lord. Right. Amen. It's like that old song, we have come into this place, we have gathered in his name to worship him. Yeah. We, we are here to praise and magnify God. And, and, and I love good preaching and I love great singing. I'm all for that. I think we need to do as good as we possibly can. But the test of maturity as a disciple is if, I mean, this never happens here, but if they were off key, or if the preaching was really bad. And maybe that does happen here. I don't know. But, um, but the test of maturity is when I say, you know what? It doesn't have to be the greatest preaching in the world. I'm trying to help myself out here. Uh, it doesn't have to be the greatest singing in the world. I'm not here to worship a preacher. I'm not here to worship a singer. I'm here to praise and magnify the Lord. Praise God. And he is worthy no matter what. Praise God. So, so that's a part of this church services picture is that we as the people of God are seeking God. And, and the wave of His Spirit and the flow of His Spirit is something that we want to be in. We want to be, uh, you know, under the spout where the glory comes out. We want to be in the flow of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 And we want to respond to the move of God. It's really twofold. I, I haven't taught or preached in like a week, so I'm just saying everything. Um, it's twofold. On the one hand, it is response to what we feel in the service. We're responding to the move of the Holy Ghost in a service. The other layer, though, is that whether I feel something or not, I will respond to the grace of God in my life. I'm breathing, I'm alive, I'm healthy for the most part. I was able to come to the house of God and meet with the best people in the world. So I have a reason to praise God. You arrive at, maybe you were fighting with your spouse all the way here. We didn't ride together tonight, so I'm not talking about my family. Um, you know, maybe you had a bad day at work, all of that. And this is the place where we come into the presence of God and whether we are, whether they're singing our favorite song or not, whether the preacher is preaching our favorite sermon or not, it doesn't matter. I am responding to the grace of God in my life. Amen. That I am alive, that I am in the house of God, that the Lord has been good to me. Thank you, Jesus. Because everything we do in worship ultimately is a response. Right. We're not initiating. God initiated. For the grace of God that brings salvation right. has appeared to all men. Yes. Right. Teaching them that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, they should live soberly and righteously in this present age. We are responding to the grace of God every time we worship the Lord. Yes. Praise God. 
So we have structure, and, and it's hard to really shift away from structure and teach anything else because it's so wonderful. Such a blessing to us. Makes you feel good. Just you think about structure. Think about waffles, ice trays, tile floors. It's just, it's good. It's good. But there is another side of the coin, and that is what we'll call spontaneity. Buckle up. Spontaneity is the other side of the structure coin. Hear me out. Because we recognize God as the one who is ultimately in charge of services, we are always anticipating, yearning for even, God's visitation. We might even call it, were we a little bit conceited, we might even call it an interruption. <laughs> God is interrupting what we are doing. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yes, yes indeed. Um, we are anticipating a divine visitation. We are Pentecostal people and expecting, yearning for, longing for a move of the Holy Ghost that God would step into the service, that, that the Lord would have his way in the service. And often that involves a spontaneous element. It is a vital feature of any gathering that desires to pattern itself after the New Testament church. There are too many biblical examples to list, but, but a, a number of them. And, and, you know, for example, the lady with the issue of blood in Luke chapter 8. If you think about that through the lens of a church service and and. And I don't think it's too great a jump to make that step. I mean, Jesus is there. So that constitutes what I feel is the primary ingredient for a church service. Right. There's also disciples around right. and Jesus is on the move. Right. Now, if you know the story, Jesus is on the move to go heal someone. Right. But the lady with the issue of blood has had enough. She's done all that she can do. And so she makes her way somehow through the crowd and touches the hem or, or the tassel toward the bottom of, uh, uh, of his garment. And, and it stops everything. Well, that is spontaneous, right? Jesus was on his way to heal someone else. He was on a mission. He was focused. He was going somewhere. And a spontaneous thing happened. And you know the story, Jesus stops, he addresses her and, and, uh, and affirms her healing and then of course moves on to do the other healing that he was going to do. How about this example? Perhaps you are familiar with the book of Acts chapter 2. I like to think of that as a... And they were gathered together and they were waiting. They were obeying what Jesus had told them to do. Um, now... I don't know if their service order for that day, you know, had it listed at such and such a time, the Holy Spirit is going to fill the room and cloven tongues as a fire will appear upon each of us and we will all speak with other tongues as the Spirit give them utterance. I'm guessing that was not in the program that day. But it was spontaneous. They were praying. They were doing their part as the people of God. They were in the flow of the Holy Ghost, or, or just about to be. They were doing what they needed to be to get into the flow of the Holy Ghost. And then the Spirit is poured out. There is a spontaneous element to this because God refuses to be put in a box. God refuses to, to uh, let us think that we have God figured out. And so... That is a key feature of what it means to be a New Testament Christian. That there is an element of spontaneity. Now, all of those that are like me that love structure, we like this. You thought I was going to say something different. Um, no, it's, it's fine. It, it really is okay. I mean, 
Because if all we have is structure, it's, it's dead. It's like the graveyard. We've, we've, right. you know, it, it, it's not enough. It's, there's something missing. Right. And, and there is an element in the nature of God, I believe, that, that is spontaneous. Yeah. He keeps us guessing. Because God isn't going to be figured out by a person. I heard the other day or read it that, you know, I guess AI and sometime this year is supposed to be smarter than the smartest human who's ever lived. I'm not really into the AI thing. People are creating memes and those are kind of funny in some ways, I guess. So, but I, it's, I, mean, I know it's a real thing. I'm not dismissing it as a significant thing, but I don't care. I'm trying to deal with my own human intelligence and make that work. Um, I don't want to think about machines that have already beaten me. So, but, but God is God. And God will not be a move of God. The challenge we deal with, uh, at, you know, here, what, are, what is this, 2024? So here, 120 some years later, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in, in the U.S. in the early 1900s, we deal with this challenge of we know what to know what to accordingly. We understand God is God. His presence is so valuable, so important, and so necessary that any moment when we sense his nearness, we must respond appropriately. Sometimes the appropriate response is worship. Sometimes the appropriate response is prayer. Sometimes the appropriate response is dancing before the Lord. Sometimes it's prayer for others. But there has to be a willingness to respond to the move of God. It has to happen. The key, and and I know that we pray this, but I want to reinforce it for us. The key is that we are always praying for God to visit us. Amen. Amen. When Jesus is here, anything can happen. Amen. Spontaneity is important, and it's a scriptural element of church services. We understand it's not an excuse for laziness or lack of planning, but there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. There has to be a willingness really by all of us. I mean, certainly by me, right? I, I have to be comfortable with the spontaneous and the structure elements of it in, in my role and what I do. But you also have to be comfortable with it. Right. And, and, and that will stretch us all at times. That will stretch us all. And, and so, you know, obviously Scripture gives us guidance for how, how we work our way through this and how we understand this and, and how we do our best to position our heart and our mind so that, that we're comfortable with the structure, but we're also yearning for a interruption or a visitation from the Lord. So I want to work you through my understanding of how this works. And, and, and this is built on many years of observing this and thinking about this and even praying about this. Um, and I, I feel like that this is an adequate way or perhaps a biblical way to understand what it means to be Pentecostal in a church service, right? Uh, and and I, to, I love this stuff because I think there's nothing more important than what happens in a Pentecostal church service. On any given day of the week, partic- I mean, it happens a lot on Sunday, but on any given day of the week, where people have gathered together and they have said, God, you are going to be God in this service and we're going to exalt and glorify you and we're going to respond to you. There's nothing more important in all the earth than what happens in a Pentecostal church service. And so, uh, but uh, scripture, how to be comfortable, appropriately comfortable. We don't be so comfortable we fall asleep or anything like that, but appropriately uh, comfortable so that we can flow with the move of the Holy Ghost. So the first point is, God is in charge. So if it ever gets to the place, you know, uh, if, if you're ever a part of a church, maybe let's, where you wonder, is God in charge? Then, then that's probably a problem. That's probably worth, you know, let's talk about that. God is in charge. God's the boss. It's God's church. Um, he's in charge. So that's where we start. We also understand that humans are used by God 
to guide a service and to flow with the Spirit. In our, our worship teams and our service leaders, we talk about this a lot. Um, because I, I worship God, and, and, but when I come to church, I'm not only here to worship, right? I have a job to do. Right. Like I, I mean, I'm working, and appropriately so. Um, so what I'm doing many times on a Sunday is praying and seeking God in the service. Lord, what are, you, what are you accomplishing here? What do you want to accomplish here? What's the flow of your spirit for this service? What are you aiming to do? And, and how can I be a part of that? How can I be a part of that flow? And so there's sometimes in a church service where, you know, I'll go to the pulpit and I'll be like, hey, let's get after it. Let's praise God. You know, they're doing a great job and the Lord is moving and, and you know, and, and that's because I'm trying to follow what the Lord has for that service. Other times, it seems like, you know, things have been crazy and good and God is blessing it. You know, everybody's just doing wonderful. And I, I start, the, I go to the pulpit and I shift us away from that. It's not because I don't want to move of God. It's because I know that God has other things in store for the service. Most of the time, I know what's going to be preached. Not always. But if I'm preaching, I usually know what's going to be preached. And I know what the Lord wants to accomplish in the preaching and in the altar service after the preaching. And so, so a human then is tasked by God to flow with the Spirit. This is one of the most important parts of, of being in the ministry and being in a role where you are responsible for a service. Because it matters, it's significant. And, and I won't cite the scriptural examples to illustrate this, you'll have to take my word for it, but if you're curious, Acts 2, 14, um, and then Acts 16, verse 28, uh, are two examples where there is a clear impartation from God and a human steps in and says, okay, here's what's happening. Here's what's going on. Um, we need that. God works in that flow of authority. God works in that structure and in that system. And that's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we seek God. Because we want to be in the flow of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, God uses those that are in authority to guide. Um, and so, uh, if God has something to say, He will speak it to them. Uh, or it may come through a tongues and interpretation. Uh, this happens, I mean, it hasn't happened here with me yet. I'm sure it's happened in the past. But in other uh, previous life experiences, you know, you'd, there'd be a great move of God and, and somebody would, you know, come up to me and say, hey, you know, I want to tell this story about, you know, the three little lambs and, you know, they ate some ivy and, and you know, I feel like that's important, like the church needs to hear it. <laughs> Being a little bit facetious. But, uh, and I would say, well, you know, I don't feel like that's the word of God for this service or this moment. And, and so we just would young pastor. Amen. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. My God. Oh, help us, Lord. Jesus. Um, but e when, you, when you're really young and you look even younger, it happens a lot more. People think, well, you know, this person's gullible or whatever else. And so, um, so... You know, that's not something that's very common. I'm not saying it never can never happen and be right, but typically it's not a common thing. What I mean is somebody comes up and says, hey, I have a word. Do you mind if I, you know, take over the service? No. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll help me, Lord. Um, be, and I'll just say it like this without, I'm not trying to make this about me. I hope you understand that. But if you've been on your face seeking God all week in prayer and fasting and, you know, the church said we want you to be your pastor, then you have a word. <laughs> uh, and and, and that's, that's my job. That's my responsibility. I take it very seriously. It's not something I'm casual about. The younger person, uh, before I ever pastored or anything like that, but I was a preacher, many times I would feel the move of God and, and I would want to say something during a service but I wasn't responsible for the service. I wasn't in a position of authority in the church. I, I had no, you know, I mean, I felt this, this strong impression from the Lord. And, and if you are a, a preacher, that's natural. Yeah. 
That's going to happen. It's like if you're a singer uh, or, or a musician and, and the Lord begins to move on you and you just want to go sing or you just want to go play. That's part of it. But it doesn't mean that in that specific service that that can happen. I had to learn that even though God's spirit was moving on me, it wasn't my turn to speak. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't for me. I had to trust the authority that God had put in place. So here's the thing. The, ch the church has to trust its leaders to effectively follow the spirit and guide the service. And so the pulpit serves as a kind of rudder, but it's not a rudder uh, that's separate from the move of God. The, the pulpit, in the best of circumstances, is a rudder that is in alignment. And the, the one in the pulpit isn't steering to wherever they want to go because, you know, they had a great week and they're happy and they're excited or they had a terrible week and they're sad and they're depressed and that's, they're going to steer the service that way. The, the, the rudder of the pulpit is to follow the move of the Holy Ghost. Um, and so that's what, that's what we do here, and, and that happens in lots of other churches where they're doing it correctly. Um, it's following the Spirit and steering accordingly. In a Pentecostal service, and I've already said this, so I won't linger here too long, the response of the congregation to the move of the Holy Ghost is what creates momentum in the service. Yeah. Right. It really does. Um, We've all been there. We've all been part of services where, uh, you know, <laughs> have you ever been in a service? Obviously not at the Bible church, obviously, but you've been out somewhere else, probably 12 states away, and, you know, the music was just like, you know, loud and good and all of that, and, and people were praising God, and then the music stopped. It was like, <laughs> what happened? Well, there's a whole lot there, but we'll probably leave that alone. Um, but it is, it is the response to the move of the Holy Ghost. So it's not the music that creates the move of God. And we love music. Uh, it's not the preaching that creates the move of God. God is here. God is moving. It's up to us to respond to it. But that's really where the momentum comes from. Now, the pulpit should build faith, and, and the worship should lead us into worship, and we all have our roles, but it's really up to all of us to respond, and that is where the momentum comes from. Right. Amen. So, I believe church services should be handled and delivered like an exquisite meal. I think that we need to do our best, and, and we need to be clear and concise, and it needs to be... Uh, as smooth as we can make it. Right. Now, sometimes with that whole spontaneity thing, it's not always that way. And we just have to flow with it and say, okay, this is the way that it is. Um, so here's uh, worship. We would say worship. Uh, hear, hear me out. There's a number of these. Worship as primary. We gather to give, and our giving is in worship. You could think of that as the ministry of praise. Preaching as primary. We gather to hear preaching. That you might think of as the ministry of receiving. Individual response is primary. We gather to pray. That is the ministry of responding. And if we don't respond, it was just a show. If we don't respond, we, we have left it there. My responsibility, all of our responsibility in church services is to respond to the move of the Holy Ghost. And, and the Lord will help us and God will move upon us. And, and I am thankful for what we have here. And I want us to continue to push. Sometimes responding in church is a push for all the different things that we've talked about and probably some that we haven't talked about. There are times where you are fighting you're fighting the flesh. Sometimes you may be fighting a spirit. Right. Amen. Sometimes it's just the way that it works. But it's a fight worth fighting. Yes. You're going to have the victory if you're able to fight. If you're able to push, regardless of how you feel, regardless of, of any other circumstance, it's worth it to push yourself in worship. Yes. To push yourself with a high reward. 
Uh, I want to go through briefly here. I know we're at time, and, and I'm going to be respectful of your time. But I, I want to go through that outline of our service schedule again that I did last time. It's all right on the top of our minds. But we do pre-service prayer, you, you'll recall. Uh, we talked about it. It may occupy a different time slot, um, but it will always precede service. We did that on Friday night. You, you may have noticed that. Friday night, um, we started at 7. Well, pre-service prayer wasn't at 6.30. It was at 6.45. And so, so we may move that around at times uh, for different reasons, but, but pre-service prayer is vital. It will always be a core part of what we do. Um, we, we did it this evening. Uh, we invoke the name of Jesus before we worship. It's that short but vital prayer to say we are gathered here in the name of Jesus. Uh, worship, singing praise to God. This is our offering to God. It's our responsibility. The other uh, component of worship, tithe and offering of our finances to God. It's a measure of our faith. It's a spiritual act. Preaching. Preaching is worship. Preaching inspires faith. Uh, preaching convicts the heart. Um, preaching in a Pentecostal service should be participatory. Amen. I'm thankful to God that it is here. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then the, the, the final component is the altar service. As I, as I mentioned, it's not an appendage to be added depending on how well the preacher does. We should never not respond in the altar. Right. I'm going to say that again. We should never not respond in the altar. Right. Our response can't be braced on, on, on how well the preacher handles the altar call or how compelling the message was um, because we're not responding to a human preacher. We're responding to God and to his life-changing word. Right. And we understand that the altar time is of equal importance to the rest now i understand that many times we're tired by the time altar service happens <laughs> sometimes i'm tired by the time we get to altar service but it is of equal importance because and in the altar the preaching of the word is implanted in our hearts by the holy spirit right. you receive the engrafted word here we give God an opportunity to confirm his word. Um, I'm convinced of this. I'm convinced of the reason that we don't see more miracles. Oh, I'm going there. More signs, more wonders in, is because, and, and we, we're, <laughs> if we want God to confirm his word, we have to give God the opportunity to confirm his word. You know, uh, it sort of be like if someone never gave in the offering and they never tithe, and they're like, God, confirm your word about giving. God's like, well, start giving and I will. Um, similarly, with, with preaching and the word, I believe the word has power. I believe the word has life-changing power. And so I want to respond to the preaching of the word. Sometimes you hear preaching is the greatest preaching you ever heard in your life. Sometimes it's adequate or average. It doesn't really matter as long as they preach the word because the word is where the power is. And so, so I want to encourage us to always respond in the altar to the preaching of the word. Now, you can respond in your pew. And I recognize not everybody is physically able to come to the altar. But most of us are. Right? Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I know we're getting tired. Um, I always feel like that can be almost a little bit of a cop-out, you know? Uh, everybody be like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the altar the next time, you know? going to do it. But then we get in the service, and we're like, but he did say not everybody has to go to the altar. And, you know, <laughs> one time when I was 12, I hurt my big toe, and so, you know, I don't think I'm going to make my way down there. Um, God is the same here as he is back there. I get it. I really do. I understand he's an omnipresent God. Yeah, come on. But I also understand there is a component of faith. Right. Right. That's right. I remember, uh, maybe I'm thinking about Stockton a little more since Brother Lopez was here, but Bishop Kenneth Haney, uh, he was general superintendent. He would, he would come back to visit here and there, and he would preach. And um, the, the 
campus on, on Highway 99 there in Stockton seats 6,000 people. If you've never been, you should go. It's large. It's really cool. Um, and Bishop Haney would, would preach, and, and toward the end of his message, your hands raised. Well, it was a long walk. I mean, if you're going to the altar there, you're walking a few minutes, okay? I mean, but people would do it. People would respond. And there is an element of faith when you move forward to Abel. God knows that, and God will bless you. And, uh, and so I want to make sure that you understand where I'm coming uh, with this, okay? Uh, I'm encouraging all of us to come to the altar. Um, because of everything I've said, and also for new believers right. to get the Holy Ghost. They can get the Holy Ghost in their pew. I understand that. I'm for that, and I'm going to support that, right? I'm not going to say, well, you didn't get the Holy Ghost because you weren't at the altar. No, um, <laughs> but they will have faith to respond when they see other people moving. They invite you. I want to encourage you to make that step. And I know for many, it's probably a new custom. It's like, well, that's a little bit different. I respect that. I get that. I've been there. I'm an introvert. <laughs> Truly, I really am, I promise you. Um, but it makes a difference. Right. It makes a difference. So if you have questions about that, see me, and we can talk through it in a little more detail. The key is that you respond. Yeah. Respond right. to the preaching of the word with a time of prayer, praying, God, confirm your word to me. Right. Confirm your word to me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So all those different pieces are part of how we do church. And I am believing God to give us revival. I am believing God to give us growth. I am believing God, amen, that our services are going to continue to be led of the Spirit. They're going to continue to receive the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I am believing that God is going to continue to move upon us and meet with us. Praise God. Would you stand with me this Wednesday evening? Amen. The Lord is good. I'm glad to see everybody here tonight. I'm looking forward to Sunday. We're going to have a great time in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please remember the ladies conference for all the ladies. If you have questions, see Sister Stacy. Men, I'll be here with you this coming Saturday for a time of prayer. Amen. Let's finish out our service tonight with a prayer to the Lord. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, God, for what you are doing. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit at work within us. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen. I pray you would bless. I pray that you would anoint us, O oh God. We magnify you. We love you. We thank you, Jesus. We give you praise tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name.